Good morning. Now, as last week, don't be pretending to use your phone as your Bible and watching the ball game. God will turn your phone into a brick. So don't do it. If you would, uh, remember in your prayers, our, our sick, we've got a lot of people dealing with stuff and uh, they need your prayers. Felton Griffin, one of our most faithful longtime members, passed away this week. And if you would remember uh, his family in your prayers, I know they would appreciate that. And when arrangements are made, we'll make announcement about that. Uh, we continue to pray for the peace and for the protection of Israel and all that's going on over there. God bless those people. Uh, today we will share in the Lord's Supper together at the end of the message. If you're watching online and you would like to participate with us, please have your bread and juice ready for that. We continue in our study of Thessalonians. Today we are beginning 2 Thessalonians. Are you ready? This is part 20, 2 Thessalonians uh, chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy... To the church of the Thessalonians and God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We ought to thank God always for you, brothers and sisters, and rightly so. Since your faith is flourishing and the love each one of you has for one another is increasing. Therefore... We ourselves boast about you among God's churches. About your perseverance and faith in all the persecutions and afflictions that you are enduring. It is clear evidence of God's righteous judgment that you will be counted worthy of God's kingdom for which you also are suffering. I think most of us would agree that the sequel is rarely as good as the original, right? Someone makes a good movie, it's a big hit, and then motivated by greed and wanting to strike while the iron's hot, they rush out a poorly written, poorly acted sequel. But there are a few exceptions. And the sequel to 1 Thessalonians is one of those exceptions. Because 2 Thessalonians is as good as the original. 1 and 2 Thessalonians were written around A.D. 50 during Paul's second missionary journey. It was written in Corinth and then sent to Thessalonica. Paul wrote the letter with help from his companions, Silvanus, who's also known as Silas, and Timothy. The purpose of 1 and 2 Thessalonians was to encourage the persecuted believers. To encourage them to continue in faith, in hope, in love, even though they were being persecuted for their faith. Paul encouraged them to be faithful until the return of Christ. The theme of 1 and 2 Thessalonians is the return of Jesus Christ. And Paul brought a healthy balance to the teaching about the end times. There were some in that day and today who are fanatics and their end time beliefs are extreme. There are some people watching what's going on in the Middle East today and making all kinds of applications out of it. Just remember that nothing needs to happen before the rapture of Jesus Christ. He could come right now that's why we say be ready some of those fanatics even quit their jobs and they went and sat on top of mountains waiting for Jesus to return but that's not what Jesus wants us to do God wants us to be alert he wants us to live a life that is ready for his return God wants us to continue to live a holy life for his glory. God wants us to continue to be more and more like Jesus, to have his attitudes and his actions in our life. God wants us to be on guard against false teaching. It was happening then, it's happening now. 
God wants us to be aware of the attacks of the enemy. And God wants us to be faithful in sharing the gospel as we live in expectation of the imminent return of Jesus Christ. Now, there are three main things that you need to know. Number one, Jesus is coming again. How do we know? Because he said so. Number two, no one knows when. How do we not know? Because he said we won't know. So number three, are you ready? So how can we be ready for the return of Jesus Christ? We must first humble ourselves and repent of our sin to God. To repent means to turn away. It means to turn around. It means to do a 360 We are to turn away from our sinful life and we are to turn to God's forgiveness found in Jesus Christ. And we accept his free gift of grace. It's nothing that we do. He does it all through faith in Jesus Christ. For God loved the world in this way. He gave his one and only son That everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. You can be ready by believing in Jesus. But not just believing that he exists. Not just believing in your head. But by believing in your heart. And by confessing your desire to follow Jesus no matter what the cost. Romans chapter 10 verse 9 If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. One believes with the heart resulting in righteousness and one confesses with the mouth resulting in salvation. Romans 10 verse 13. For everyone. Now by the way in the Greek... Everyone, guess what it means? It means everyone. No matter what you've done, no matter how far you are away from God today, everyone includes you and it even includes me. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. That's how you're ready for the coming of Jesus. And as we begin our study of 2 Thessalonians, we see a church that continues to be faithful. They continue to be faithful even though they are facing persecution for their faith. Now, it's hard for some of us to understand what that really means, to be persecuted for what we believe. Maybe maybe you've been made fun of at work or school. Maybe you've been excluded or left out of some things because they knew you were a Christian, and that happens. But only a few of us experience physical abuse because of our faith. And these people were going through terrible stuff. The church in Thessalonica was growing in their love for God. And they were growing in their love for each other. But where good things are happening for the glory of God, watch out. Because opposition is on its way. Many of the problems that Paul taught about in 1 Thessalonians, were still going on, still happening. Persecution continued to challenge their faith. False teachers continued to stir up trouble. Some of the Christians in the Thessalonian church were not doing their fair share of the work. But even with these challenges, Paul said in verse 4, Therefore, we ourselves boast about you Among God's churches. Now just like Paul. I brag about you every chance I get. About your love for God. About your love for each other. About your diversity. About your acceptance. You know you can feel the love of God when you walk in this place. And that is a blessing we should never take for granted. It is a beautiful thing. A few months after this first letter, Paul writes again to the Thessalonians. 
And Paul wanted to encourage them. He wanted to equip the new believers. And nothing encourages people more than praise. Praise is an encourager. Now we know that prayer changes people. And that's why Paul encourages us to pray constantly. That's one of the Bible verses you've memorized from 1 Thessalonians. But praise also changes people. And that's why Paul encourages us to give thanks in everything. Easy to say. Not always easy to do. Give thanks to God. And we should also give thanks for each other. See, as Christians, we are in spiritual warfare. We must always be aware that we have a spiritual enemy who wants to destroy us. An enemy who wants to discourage us. And some of us are discouraged today. One of the weapons that the enemy uses against us is suffering. And when we are going through difficult circumstances, the enemy tries to use discouragement to weaken our faith. But one of our best weapons against our spiritual enemy is praise. You just go ahead and praise anyway. And God honors that. In the story of Job, he lost everything, all his stuff. He lost his family. He lost his health. And in the middle of terrible, terrible suffering, Job was still able to say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. And when you're going through difficult days, you can defeat the discouragement of the enemy when you look to God and give him praise in all things. Paul knew exactly what the Thessalonian church was going through because he himself had been terribly persecuted for his faith. Paul knew the secret to defeating the attacks of our spiritual enemy. It is to give thanks in everything. Not to give thanks for everything. There's a difference. But to give thanks to God in everything. Praise can bring to us real life change from the inside out through Jesus. Paul gave thanks because the faith of the Thessalonian church continued to grow. Verse 3. We ought to thank God always for you, brothers and sisters, and rightly so, since your faith is flourishing. A faith that is not tested cannot be trusted. A faith that is not tested is a faith that cannot be trusted. And the test of your faith proves whether or not your faith is genuine. Whether or not your faith is real. And just like our muscles grow stronger with exercise, our faith grows stronger when we go through trials and hard times. When you go through hard times, you will either blame God and become bitter or you will praise God and become stronger. It's your choice today. Paul had heard how the Thessalonian church was responding to their persecution and they chose to praise God and become stronger. An easy life will produce a fickle faith. An easy life will produce a fickle faith. And all through the scriptures, the great men and the great women of faith, they all faced trials and difficult days. Paul had prayed for the Thessalonians to grow in their faith and God had answered Paul's prayer. And they grew in their faith even though it meant suffering. Praise is an encourager. 
Paul said, because of praise, your faith is flourishing. Another encourager is love. Verse 3, and the love each one of you has for one another is increasing. This was another prayer of Paul that had been answered. He had prayed that their love would grow, and it was And if I'm not careful, suffering can make me selfish. And when I'm going through heartache, it seems that all I can think about is my problems. It's like I think I'm the only one who has ever hurt. It's like I think I'm the only one who has a broken heart. But we know that's not true. And no matter how bad my situation is, there is always someone worse off than me. And that's why one of the best ways to break out of our self-pity is to bless someone else. One of the best ways to break out of our self-pity is to serve someone else. One of the best ways to break out of our self-pity is to love someone else. One of the ways to break out of our self-pity is to pray for someone else. And when I mix my suffering with thanks and praise, the result will be love for God and love for each other. Paul said in Galatians 5, what matters is faith working through love. And when I respond to my suffering through love, I will keep my eyes on God and His faithfulness. At the same time, while I reach out to others and try to help them, others who are hurting like I am. And that's what God's love does in my heart. God's love brings real life change through Jesus from the inside out. Praise is an encourager. It will cause my faith to grow. It will cause my love to grow. It will even cause my patience to grow. Verse 4. Therefore, we ourselves boast about you among God's churches about your perseverance and faith in all the persecutions and afflictions that you are enduring so what is perseverance it's having dedication it's having determination it's having grit it's having spunk it's having excuse me guts But I will never become a patient person by just attending a conference or listening to a message or listening to a podcast. There is only one way to develop patience and it's through perseverance. In other words, there is one way to become more patient. I must suffer. And Paul used several words To describe the suffering that the Thessalonian church was enduring. Attacks. Trials. Tribulations. Afflictions. Troubles. And it is God's plan for those things. For those trials to work for me. And not against me. And how I respond to my trials and my difficult days will determine if I will grow spiritually or if I remain spiritually immature and impatient. God wants to build character in my life. And my character will grow stronger if I go through trials with the right kind of attitude. You see, praise is an encourager. It will cause my faith to grow. It will cause my love to grow. It will cause my patience to grow. Verse 5. 
It is clear evidence of God's righteous judgment that you will be counted worthy of God's kingdom for which you are also suffering. And no matter how bad things got for the Thessalonian church, they still believed, they still knew that God was in control. They believed that their future was secure in God. They believed that their suffering proved that they were safe in the hands of God, no matter what's going on around them. It is clear evidence of God's righteous judgment that you will be counted worthy of God's kingdom for which you also are suffering. We know that suffering does not make us a Christian. We become a Christian only by by God's grace through faith in Jesus Christ. But God promises a reward for the faithful. One day, the wicked will be judged and the faithful will be rewarded. Our calling as a Christian is to live our life with eternity in mind. And that's why we are told to walk by faith and not by sight. And even though things may not make sense to us right now, we must continue to trust in the Lord with all our heart. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, Blessed are those who are persecuted. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness. For the kingdom of heaven is theirs. You are blessed when they insult you. You are blessed when they persecute you. You are blessed when they falsely say every kind of evil against you because of me. Be glad and rejoice. Because your reward is great in heaven. Jesus encourages us. Praise is an encourager. It will cause my faith to grow. It will cause my love to grow. And even cause my patience to grow. One of the ways that helps us to remember what God has done. And to praise God from our heart is to share in the Lord's Supper. We take the Lord's Supper to help us remember what God has done for us and in us. And Jesus said, every time you do this, do this in remembrance of me. And so if you are a born-again Christian, you are invited to participate. Now the scriptures encourage us, every time we do this, that we should examine our own heart and I will encourage you to do that now and when you're ready go to one of the tables get the bread and juice take it back to your seat and in a few minutes we'll take it together so please come when you're ready
Jesus was in Jerusalem with his disciples and they were in the upper room celebrating Passover together and Jesus took the bread and he broke it and he blessed it and he said take eat this represents my body that is broken for you and then he took the cup that represents his blood that's shed for us and he said every time you drink this do this in remembrance of me. Dear God, for your sacrifice for us, we thank you. May we never take it for granted. May it always move us to love you more and to serve you better. In your name we pray. Amen. Our worship team's coming back to lead us in a song before we're dismissed. God bless you.
Power in the name of Jesus. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. And there was a, people ask me, wherever I go, my friends, my circle of friends, even at, at work, they ask, Jerry, why are you always happy? How, how, there was even a question, someone that's very close to me asked, how do you do it? Uh, just a little background, I, I lost my one and only son about five years ago, but Pastor Rick, sent a good message. How do you counter despair, grief, the, the discouraging news that we see, that's what's developing in Israel and even around us. There was uh, even three young children who were arrested uh, where my daughter goes because they're planning to kill people, uh, freshman students. Uh, it's just disheartening. The answer, praise. 
it'll grow your faith, it'll grow your love, it'll grow your patience. God bless. Amen. Mm -hmm.